Right. Hi, everyone. My name is Mike Zelstra. I'm the director of photonic components at Analog Photonics. Uh, you might hear me refer to Analog Photonics as AP. Um, and for this panel discussion, I'm going to talk to you about design enablement using AIM Photonics PDKs for high performance integrated photonics. Um, so before diving deep into this topic, it's fair to ask yourself, what does it even mean to enable high performance integrated photonics? And I kind of thought about this as I was putting these slides together, and I kind of put together a sort of wish list of all the features that I would want in a PDK. I want short lead time so I can publish my paper and get out of grad school. Um, I want documentation so I know how to use the PDK. I want a low loss, wide bandwidth components that work the first time. I want high speed components. And this is pretty crucial. I don't have to tell you guys that uh, Datacom is the number one application of integrated photonics. I want lasers and gain materials. I want compact models to simulate and drive my layout. And I want turnkey packaging for my, for my picks. And it's easy to forget this is one of the biggest costs of photonics. It's just simply packaging the chips that we make. So, so these are all the things that I want, and hopefully you guys want as well. And over the years, Analog Photonics has worked with AIM to create these PDKs. And I think we do a pretty good job of checking all these boxes. So I'll kind of look at the highlights of these throughout my talk. So here's the sort of generic workflow of making these PDKs. We start with the component design. And we take ideas from anywhere we can, academia, industry, OFC conferences, and most importantly, from the MPW riders themselves. We take these components and design test radicals for fabrication. After about five months, we get the chips back and we measure them in-house using both wafer scale and dye level testing. So at, at AP, we can, we can do O, L, C band testing, 50 gigahertz, EO, OE, high speed testing, and I diagrams. And the, the verification is actually pretty crucial for high performance picks. If the component doesn't work or is out of spec, we try our best to correct any of these issues for the next fab run. And if it's a new component, we'll do some optimization based on DOEs and measurements. And then finally, we release the PDK package to MPW riders complete with component documentation for, for user guides. And uh, let's take a closer look at what's inside these PDK packages. So, in a nutshell, PDKs are basically like a library of components. It's like a kind of Lego set. And we've tried to include components that enable diverse applications from datacom, advanced computing, to sensing and phased arrays. And you can see how we've classified the components as either passive or active. The passive components contain things like edge couplers, splitters, power taps, and, and so on. Components that are generally needed for any application. The active components contain things like MZMs, microdisc modulators, photo detectors, filters, and switches. And you can see we've made variants that are actually optimized for specific applications. For example, you see on the on the right there, the analog MZM and analog photo detectors. These were specifically designed for linearity and high dynamic range. This makes them suitable for coherent communications, analog RF, and microwave links. On the other hand, you have the sort of digital active components, and these are sort of optimized for speed and can be classified as either broadband or resonant. And these digital active components enable the design of digital transceivers, switches, WDM, and sensing. But before I talk about these components, I just want to go a little bit over the uh, passive components a little bit. So if you look at our PDK, you'll notice there's either silicon or silicon nitride components. Each of these have their advantages and disadvantages. On one hand, you have the silicon, which has a fairly high refractive index. So you get higher confinement and smaller component footprints. And the key benefit of silicon is that it can be doped to enable high performance EO modulation. However, silicon components generally have narrower optical bandwidth and low power handling due to two photon absorption. On the other hand, you have silicon nitride components that has a lower refractive index and larger component footprints. And although nitride components can't be doped, they have a wide, generally have a wider optical bandwidth and have higher power handling. Included in all our PDKs are layer transitions or escalators as we call them that enable users to get the best of both worlds here. And <laughs> it wouldn't be a photonic stop if I didn't bring up polarization. All of our components are optimized for TE polarization. And this is, this is due to the higher confinement, the lower loss and lower dispersion than TM. However, there's an important exception here. We, 
we, we sort of understand that users might want to avoid using PM fibers due to extra costs and required rotational alignment steps. So to enable polarization diversity with non PM fibers, we've included high efficiency polarization splitter rotators. And these enable the coupling of arbitrary fiber polarization states to the TE components. And any sort of difference in group delay between the TNT and channels can be corrected using integrated photonic delay lines or sort of downstream electronic processing. And now I'll get to, uh, I'll briefly go over some of the high speed performance uh, of our PDK components. So our PDKs enable a variety of data comm applications. If you look on the right, you'll see the 50 gigabits and 100 gigabits PAN4 I diagrams for one of our MZMs. This modulator has a 3 dB insertion loss of EPIL of 0.6 to 1.2 volt centimeters and supports single arm or push pull operation. Um, next to that, you see our micro disk modulators with 50 gigabits per second I diagrams. Just over 2 nanometer variation of resonance across the full wafer. So these designs are pretty stable. Um, oh, sorry, just jumped ahead there. <laughs> and uh, so all of our MZM and micro disk modulators have a bit of have a built in thermal tuners. So these the resonance. Uh, so any variations in these resonance can be tuned. Next to that, we have the photo detectors. And these have pretty high responsivity, but one, just over one amp per watt, high e OE bandwidth around 50 gigahertz for the C band digital and uh, low dark current, so below 15 nano amps. And we also have O band PDs. I'm just showing the C and CL band here. Um, the O band performance is pretty similar to the C band, maybe slightly lower responsivity. And you can see even these, these have pretty low capacitance, so they can be readily integrated with uh, TIAs. Um, so this is pretty, pretty nice components that we have in our, um, our data comm digital libraries here. Um, and if you look at the waveguide loss, um, it, so if you look at the waveguide loss in the Bakes Actives PDK in the lower left, you'll notice the significant absorption in the nitride layers around 1520. This is kind of bad because it negates the benefits of using the silicon nitride components. So to overcome this, uh, the process engineers at SUNY have developed a proprietary process that dramatically reduces this loss. And analog photonics has then adapted the base active PDK components to this newly developed low loss process with only a slight drop off in high speed performance. You can see on the right, photo detector responsivity in the bandwidth is still pretty robust. Um, after using this low loss process for the MCM, you actually see a slight improvement in the VPIL. It's a little bit lower than for the low loss process. And there's just a little bit of a trade off with the MCM 3 dB bandwidth, maybe 3 or 4 gigahertz. But the upshot is we get about half a dB per centimeter waveguide loss for the 1st nitride layer. So this, this process took a bit of development. But there are a lot of other little small changes in the PDK process that we had to incorporate to enable this. So it was sort of a joint effort between analog photonics and aim photonics and SUNY to get this, this work done. So it's pretty impressive with a low loss they've achieved here. Um, so aim photonics actually enables small changes in the standard PDK process. For example, you can have variations of the ridge depth, depth. Maybe you want to optimize a grading coupler or even different waveguide thicknesses on the uh, nitride layers. Maybe you want some dispersion engineering, you put trench, various trenches to these waveguides. Maybe you want to make a sensor or something like that. Um, customized doping, uh, perhaps you want to try a new modulator design, extra metals. Um, maybe there's some restrictions to your routing, tech, routing topology. Um, and even this undercut here, so if you want to increase your sort of thermal tuning efficiency, um, you can incorporate this undercut and it creates a little more thermal isolation. And you can see here, I've kind of highlighted this sort of silicon uh, trench edge, and this can mitigate the uh, substrate losses for edge couplers. You can see on the figure on the right there, um, you actually get a pretty good, uh, some improvement with the edge coupler efficiency by using these trenches here. So SUNY, uh, SUNY offers these sort of customizations and uh, they allow a little bit of flexibility to these processes that you don't see at other sort of foundries. 
So next is sort of my favorite PDK is sort of this active interposer uh, PDK, and it's a relatively recent offering at Infotonics, and has a lot of cool features. Um, basically, it consists of a low loss silicon photonics process that I kind of showed you earlier there. So it has all these great OLC band components, and then they actually flip on this onto an interposer wafer, and this has TSVs and all sorts of uh, nice features. And this allows thousands of short, high performance RF electrical interconnections to made either through a flip chip CMOS or from the chip to the PCB. And this kind of enables scalable high component densities. Um, and this also enables sort of uh, integration with CMOS from diverse process nodes. So you can sort of pre yield and minimize the risk. And, and, and one key feature of this is that it has this sort of trenches that you can put flip chip lasers in. So you actually get gain materials integrated onto your photonic chip and a nice uh, package of, of a chip there. So there's a ton of great features. I really don't have enough time to sort of speak to them all. Um, so I'll just move to uh, here some of the highlights of this platform. Um, so you get very good coupling efficiencies in this platform and even lower wave guide loss, um, almost 0 0.1 dB per centimeter for the nitride layer. And this is primarily because of the increased substrate to wave guide distance. Um, and you also get good uh, edge coupling efficiencies, much lower than even the low loss um, platform there. And on the right, you can see some of the most recent efforts uh, with incorporating flip chip laser integration, showing pretty good coupling, about 3 dB loss, and uh, pretty robust on chip uh, optical power with about uh, 10 milliwatts of coupled optical power. This PDK also supports GSG controlled impedance transmission lines to allow for signal routing for a sensitive RF signals. And I really love this platform. It enables a whole lot of uh, features. And then next we have this sort of packaging enablement that AIM Photonics and Analog Photonics have put together, this sort of packaging PDK here. And basically it, it goes, it exercises AIM Photonics test assembly and packaging facility. And some of the things you can see at the, you can do at that facility, I can't really name them all. There's just so many of them. They can do metallization, wire bonding, flip chip attach, uh, optical fiber attach, and, and so on. And I've kind of highlighted uh, some of the, the key steps that I can do there. Um, so to support this package, uh, this PDK, uh, Analog Photonics has created a packaging PDK library complete with on-chip and also PCB components uh, complete with compact models. Uh, so these also support GSG, um, differential uh, impedance transmission lines, uh, fiber arrays, and uh, all sorts of other features. Sort of speaking of compact models, all of our PDKs actually come with compact uh, component model libraries uh, supported through numerical interconnect, and then they also enable interoperability through the cadence virtuoso environment. So just a quick look to the future here. Um, we're currently incorporating advanced modeling for gain media um, using the Active Interposer platform. Uh, this Hopefully in the near future, we'll incorporate the traveling wave laser model for the optical amplifier. This is sort of a 1D model. It's a relatively new feature offered by uh, Lumerical Interconnect. Um, and also spectra models for electrical components. I think we actually just released an electrical PDK, uh, electrical interposer PDK that incorporates these new models as well. So we can sort of simulate a full optoelectronic high speed uh, setup. And also, we're, we're working towards uh, enabling schematic driven uh, uh, workflows um, so users can sort of focus on their IP rather than the sort of trivial routing of uh, the optical components themselves. And then uh, finally, you see there on the, the lower right the sort of PCB packaging concept. It's in development. I can't really take credit for this. This is from the hard work of uh, Anthony Amit at AIM Photonics, but these are sort of the concepts we're sort of looking towards in terms of a turnkey packaging. Uh, options that uh, AIM Photonics can offer through this sort of packaging PDK. So a lot of cool stuff to look forward to in the future, not years down the road, but in, in maybe this year or uh, one year from now. So this is something on the horizon. Um, and just before wrapping up, I just want to briefly conclude by highlighting some of the examples of high performance picks that have actually been enabled by our PDK. We have some uh, ALUs for advanced computing, transceivers, uh, switches, WDM, and microwave and RF photonics. So our PDKs are enabling, and they will continue to enable high-performance picks. 
So just to sort of conclude here, aim photonics, PDKs, check a lot of these boxes I mentioned in the, in the opening slide there, and I put some of the highlights here. So we've got short fab time, component verification, process customization, uh, excellent performance of our high speed uh, components and so on. Um, so I think I'm out of time, so I'll just take some time here to acknowledge uh, the great teams at both aim photonics and analog photonics for helping me put together this talk. And uh, thanks for your attention. Um, thank you very much.